I hope you're all doing good. I know it's been a long time since I've posted any videos on the channel. I was unwell for a while because I'd fallen down and I had broken my back, so I couldn't upload any videos here. Uh, I mean, which I should have very frequently, but I couldn't do it. I'm very sorry for that. Uh, but yes, today I'm here. There are some interesting recipes, uh, which is very common, but some of them really do know how to do these very simple recipes. So I thought I will bring a few recipes which are easy to make. Even the sweets are very easy to make. And uh, you can actually make them in no time. And of course, it is going to be a big, huge, uh, festive uh, for the uh, family. Uh, here I'm showing it for the two uh, adult and one child can have this recipe that I'm showing in here. Uh, but yes, uh, you can increase the quantity if you're making it for a larger number of people. So uh, for those who have not subscribed to my channel, I request you all to please subscribe to my channel. And if you've liked this video, then don't forget to like and share this. And then definitely you have to um, comment below if you've tried any of these recipes. Do let me know how you found these recipes to be. Uh, see, normally whenever I do a cooking, upload a cooking video, I normally don't talk. I just uh, play a music and I feel the recipe needs to do the talking. So I really don't talk. But here today, there were, there were a lot of recipes and uh, I thought it would be very unfair if I don't give proper instruction to you people so that you can make uh, this in just uh, the way I did it. So today morning I got up at 5, at around 5 and all the preparation I had made the previous day like chopping vegetables and all those stuff were ready the previous day. Uh, the only thing that I had to do was the cooking in the morning. So I got up at 5 and I started uh, doing uh, the recipes. And I finished it, uh, you know, since I was even recording, I finished it by around 9.30 or 10 or so. So we had the breakfast with whatever I had cooked. And a little bit of that was left for the uh, afternoon. So we had the same in the afternoon with a few more additional recipes that I had also prepared. Uh, so basically, if I have to say, it would take around 3 to uh, four hours or three three and a half hours maximum for you to make all these recipes at one go you know it would take a much longer time if you've not made the preparation the previous day especially chopping of vegetables and you know all these basic things that you know I, i'll explain as i'm doing the recipes so please make the preparations right away so that you don't have any problems while cooking and you are calm and you cook very peacefully which is very necessary for the recipes to come out really well so yeah, that was that was what it was. So without any more further delay, let's straight away jump into the recipes. The first recipe is going to be a starter, a palak soup that I'm showing in here. Now, uh, the measurements of all the ingredients that I'm using here will be displayed on the screen for all the recipes. So here I'm going to only explain how to make these dishes. Now the first thing that you have to do is wash the moong dal and palak and then uh, you need to add them in a bowl with a very little bit of salt uh, and uh, with little bit of water you got to pressure cook this. Now pressure cook just for a couple of whistles or you can even if you don't want to pressure cook it you can keep it in a bowl directly on uh, you know the gas stove and you can uh, boil the uh, you know the palak and then once it cools down you got to grind it with the help of a mixer and this is how the consistency need to be it shouldn't be too thick nor too thin and then you got to heat it and then add sugar salt and uh, black pepper with little bit of jeera powder and mix all this well together and your Palak soup is all ready to serve with butter as a topping. Now butter is added to give it a silky texture and uh, you know nice aroma and taste to your soup. Now the second recipe is a beetroot palya or beetroot sabzi. Now I kept these beetroot and palak with uh, rice together 
so that you know it saves your uh, cooking time and your lpg gas as well i'm doing the normal tadka here with cooking oil mustard uh, seeds uh, green chili onions uh, with the turmeric powder and hing and curry leaf all that you need to fry for a couple of minutes till the onions are a little soft now drain all the water from the beetroot that you boiled from in the pressure cooker and add it here and mix this all well together before you add salt as per taste now you can use the beetroot water to drink which is going to be very good tastes good and healthy as well so don't throw it either you have it or you can even uh, you know feed it to your plants it would really be a very good fertilizers for the plants once all this is mixed together and comes together really well then add the coriander leaves and dry coconut that you've grated and mix this once again for a couple of minutes before serving Now for making the carrot rice I have taken 1 cup of this regular rice but you can also use basmati rice if you wish to now if you are using basmati rice then you should be soaking in the uh, rice for at least 20 minutes now when we doing this recipe with cooked rice so it's better always to have the rice cooked the previous day it will be very easy to make this recipe with rice that is cooked but not too hot and if you see the fog outside it's around 6:45 and it rained totally completely yesterday and this is how bangalore is almost every day okay coming back to the recipe now we've taken a pan and added cooking oil ghee and all these spiced ingredients and i've crushed the black pepper here and i'm adding in here and a little bit of hing uh, that i'm also adding here and uh, just fry this for a couple of minutes before you add green chilies now here i'm using the uh, kitchen uh, you know scissors to um, you know chop uh, the green chilies and then uh, i've also added these chopped onions now ginger and garlic paste is very optional you can skip definitely if you do not want to add fry this till the onions are a little translucent and then you can add the grated carrots and mix all this well together add salt as per taste and also add garam masala coriander powder and turmeric powder before you mix all this well and close the lid and cook this for at least 7 to 8 minutes till the carrots are well cooked and soft you don't have to fry the cashews uh, separately you can add it directly uh, to this one either before uh, you know cooking the carrots or after cooking the carrots and now i'm um, you know breaking the lumps of all the rice and adding it here uh, um, you know it is that's why i told you it's always better to have the rice cooked the previous night so that it becomes easy for you in the morning um, you know while cooking this because you have to break all the lumps and add the rice here if the rice is hot you will not be able to mix it really well be it basmati rice or regular rice Okay now finally before mixing this completely well i'm adding the coriander leaves here also add red chili powder if you want it to be a little more spicy but i'm just keeping it the way it is and the carrot rice is all ready to serve now this is going to be my breakfast on the day of festival Now to make the methi chapati I'm taking 1 cup of regular wheat 
Now we can also make it with multigrain uh, atta. It's totally up to you whichever wheat flour that you want to use. I've added salt, red chili powder. Again, I've taken one uh, tablespoon. You can increase or decrease depending on your spice needs. I'm adding ajwain here and then turmeric powder, hing and mix all this well together. Um, all these dry ingredients needs to be uh, you know neatly mixed and if there are any lumps in the wheat that also can be broken down here. Here now I'm adding the methi leaves which have washed completely and uh, again I'm using the kitchen uh, scissors to um, you know the uh, chop all the methi leaves and adding it directly um, into the floor now here uh, you can also add a couple of tablespoons of basin and uh, you know curd can also be added of course all that needs to be added before you start kneading uh, for the dough now I am doing a very basic chapati so I am not doing any of that in this one but yes you can add those uh, things here in this chapati while you do this and also an important thing while adding water don't add too much of water and make it too soft because even the uh, methi leaves would leave water once you make the dough which I'll show you later how it would become a little moist so you don't make this dough very soft you got to make it a little hard because while uh, you definitely have to rest this dough for at least uh, uh, half an hour to 40 minutes before you actually start making the chapatis so an important tip whenever you're adding any vegetables uh, which you know would live water you always have to make the dough a little tight you shouldn't be making it very soft because you will have a difficulty in actually making the chapatis because it will start sticking to your uh, you know chapati board so it will not be possible for you to make the chapatis with uh, that convenience so an important thing whenever you add uh, water while making a dough be very careful and also you can use the uh, you know dough making machine uh, for making this if you're not used to making doughs once you mix all these ingredients you can put it in the dough making machine and uh, make it just the way you do the chapati dough add around one tablespoon of cooking oil and again uh, you know start kneading the dough very softly and gently and make it a little tight and bring everything together like this and rest this for a uh, for at least half an hour now if you see after resting this see this is how it looks it has become very soft so that is why I told you to not make it too soft while you actually make the dough now just the way you do a chapati you start to um, you know roll the balls you can take small or big depending on um, you know the kind of chapati that you make some people make smaller chapatis some people make big chapatis so you can make it just the way you do the regular chapatis now here you don't have to make it too thick it can be as thin as your regular chapati is so this is all ready now and you put it on a pan which is already hot so you need to heat the pan before itself and it should be on a high flame now here i'm adding one tablespoon of ghee and uh, I'm just flipping it over now on the other side I'm not adding ghee but if you want to uh, you definitely can add but uh, yeah for those who do not want to add ghee can also add cooking oil so your methi chapati is all ready to serve 
Now this is the regular tomato rasam that I normally prepare almost every other day at home. So for which I am taking half a cup of uh, a tur dal. I have washed it and I have keeping it for at least 2 to 3 hours. In this chopped tomatoes I am adding little bit of salt and water. And similarly in this soaked uh, tur dal I have added salt, cooking soda turmeric powder and little bit of cooking oil and all this is going to be pressure cooked for three whistles in the pressure cooker this is the cooker where i prepared the uh, dal now is the time to make the recipe now in this bowl i've added uh, the cooking oil mustard seeds and hing and curry leaf and made the basic tadka now I'm using this muddler to whisk the dal completely to make it very soft and mushy. Add the turmeric powder and the tur dal, the cooked tur dal to this and mix this well together. Now before grinding the tomatoes, the tomatoes that were cooked, uh, once it's completely cool, you got to grind it to a nice smooth uh, juice or paste with the help of a grinder and the water, the excess water I had removed. So I'm just using this here and, uh, you know, uh, adding the remaining turtal also. You can use either the homemade rasam powder, but here I'm using this MTR rasam powder which is very easy for those who do not know how to make the rasam powder can use this now i'm directly adding this from uh, the packet itself but again if you're not comfortable doing that way then you can always uh, add it with the help of a teaspoon in this pressure cooker i had kept beetroot palak and rice so i made it together okay now continuing with the recipe and yes don't forget to add chili powder because the rasam powder is going, not going to be that spicy now i've added the grounded uh, tomatoes uh, tamarind paste jaggery and salt and i'm mixing all this together till it comes to a boil as this begins to boil you can add coriander leaves and mix all this well before serving so here your simple and easy to make tomato saru or your tomato rasam is ready to serve now here i'll show you the easiest way to make the carrot halwa now here i've taken the grated carrot i'm adding it to a bowl with one cup of thick milk or even the regular milk will do and then you got to pressure cook this and this is how I got this cooked. The dal, the tomato for rasam and the carrot were pressure cooked together for three whistles. Now once the carrot, this is completely cool, you have to strain this and remove all the milk as much as you can. You will have to remove the milk completely so that it makes your, you know, the carrot halwa very easy to make. Otherwise, while cooking, uh, you know, the carrot would release more water and milk as you begin to cook now you can heat this milk and have this with if you want you can add uh, sugar and have that milk which would taste really very divine now in a pan i'm adding five to six tablespoons of ghee this is a homemade ghee which i have made now you can add more or less ghee if you wish to now once you heat the ghee a little bit, add this cooked uh, and strained uh, carrot uh, to this and break all the lumps and nicely mix everything together. Once everything is mixed and you feel the carrots have become a little more softer, you can add sugar. Now here the sugar quantity can be increased if you want it more sweetish or you can decrease it as per your need. Now keep mixing this really well and you would notice a watery substance being released from the sugar. Now at this stage cover the lid and cook this for at least 7 to 8 minutes. 
in the meanwhile you can keep the raisins cashews ready and also the cardamom can be nicely grounded now once you remove the lid you would notice all the water would have been evaporated and your carrot also you see the color change in the carrot so it is cooked really well now time to add the cardamom the cashews and raisins and mix all this really well for another 5 minutes and your carrot halwa is all ready to serve either directly or you can make a dessert of it by serving this with ice cream i'm making use of this 200 ml of nandini ghee now why nandini ghee is because i feel nothing tastes better than the nandini ghee that i've been using i don't know i think since my childhood days so i highly recommend the nandini ghee if you have the availability of it in your uh, a place wherever you're staying and i have taken around 250 ml of wheat flour now here you cannot add multigrain wheat you have to use the regular wheat now you got to mix all this well and break all the lumps of course lumps are going to be formed once you add water again it's around 250 ml of water that you got to add now the clipping is sorry the clipping is missing there you have to add little by little water and don't add all the water together because otherwise clearing the lumps would become very difficult and also you have to add around 250 ml of sugar keep mixing till the sugar completely dissolve before are adding the cardamom powder cashews and raisins now mix really well and your halwa is all ready to serve now to make the curd rice i have taken 1 cup of uh, cooked rice here the regular rice and around 1 cup of curd add a little salt to rice and mix the curd really well it's better to do it with hands so that you can really make the curd rice very soft then using a spatula but it's again totally up to you and now to add the tadka you have to add cooking oil mustard seeds and hing and curry leaf and add it to the curd rice now here you can also add channa dal to the tadka if you want to then time to add uh, the green chillies mix all this well with pomegranates also and your curd rice is ready now to make the kosumbris which are the most important thing that you would see in a south indian uh, you know lunch so here i'm making use of the green moong dal which is a sprouted one so i've taken one cup of it and i've added a little bit of salt and pomegranate here you know the ingredients can be increased or decreased based on your wish because here there is no such uh, set rule that you have to add this much of pomegranate or this much of moong dal but this is the basic that i'm showing on how i do it but yes you can do it uh, as per your wish so i've added pomegranates i've added cucumbers here and a little bit of lemon juice now lemon juice don't add too much of lemon juice because it will make the dish very tangy which is not necessary and then this is a very fresh uh, grated coconut that i've added again you can increase the quantity of coconut uh, that you add here and uh, i'm adding in the green chilies here also chopping the coriander leaves and adding here now i had very little coriander leaf but again you can add more now the basic tadka again cooking oil that you have to add with mustard seeds and uh, hing and curry leaf and mixing all this well and here your simple healthy sprouts kosamri is all ready isn't this mouth watering i mean we just love to have this any day now similarly one of my again favorite kosamri the carrot kosamri now here i have taken carrot cucumber again you got to keep mixing all the ingredients and then add lemon juice 
now here again the lemon juice shouldn't be too much it will make it very tangy then add the green chilies now i'm using the kitchen uh, scissors to chop them and then pomegranate again here i'm adding not much as much as i added for the green moong uh, kosambri and again the coriander leaf which i had very little so i've used for both these recipes and the grated fresh coconut here again you can add a little more if you want to salt to taste and mix all this well now here the kosambris should be the last recipe you prepare because here uh, you know some of the ingredients like the carrot and cucumber you know it will live water so you need to prepare this just half an hour before you start serving for lunch now i've added the tadka again the basic thing that i've been showing and mix all this well before you add this soaked moong dal to it now i've soaked this moong dal for around 3 to 4 hours uh, before i drained all the water and i've added the moong dal here and mixing this all well before serving so this is all ready So friends how did you find all the recipes to be I'm sure you all have loved it now there were a few recipes in which I've used onion garlic and ginger uh, because I was definitely not preparing it on the day of uh, festival but yes you can skip all three of them if you do not want to add them uh, you know um, while you're preparing for the festivity carrot rice will taste good even without onion and ginger garlic paste which I've done I think a couple of years back but definitely I had not recorded at that time So this time when I recorded, I thought let me try adding them, and the difference is there but very mild. So you can definitely skip adding any of them. So there are a few preparations for you to make. So if you start from today, you can definitely do it on the day of the Pavli. Any of the three or five days that you celebrate with the Pavli, maybe you can uh, make these recipes on one of the days and do let me know in the comment section down below on how you found these recipes to be. If you're not subscribed again, please subscribe. and like this video and uh, wish you all a very very happy and prosperous deepavali see you very soon in my next video till then take care all of you love you all and bye bye